Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a huge fan of having research that's easy to reference, visual research that you can come back to anytime, especially when you're doing things like talking about setups or individual stocks at a particular time in history. So over the course of the next few weeks, or maybe even months, my goal is to create several videos that are similar to this, one to three minutes in nature, focusing on one particular symbol, breaking down my thought process leading up to that symbol, where we can break that down step by step, and then showing you what actually happens in terms of the results, both the good along with the bad. And there was definitely bad today as well, which I'll touch on. Now today's uh, symbol that we're going to focus on is Walmart. And the reason for that is we had substantial volatility inside of the retail sector. This was prevalent throughout the day. It's true off of the backs of Walmart and Target's earnings. Both missed, both have gapped down, both have substantial selling, and as a result of that, both have substantial volatility that we can take advantage of. Now today's setup is going to be around feeding a bearish trend, but how we can do so in a manner that's both smart and we have an edge even on a day like today where Walmart is already selling off pretty dramatically. Now starting off here first with the big picture, Here's what Walmart's chart looked like on the daily time frame. On the daily time frame, you can see we had earnings just pass. Off of the earnings, we had a gap down lower. And today, our opening price was much lower than our closing price yesterday. We had another gap down lower inside of Walmart. So to me, that is suggesting a bearish bias off of our daily time frame chart. Now let's take a look at what the first 30 minutes looked like after the market opened today. Again, inside of Walmart here, first 30 minutes come in, price breaches our aggressive volatility box models. That's this first model. We go outside of it. So that's your first clue that there's a lot of selling here. Buyers aren't stepping in and buying these levels. So your first sign of selling pressure. Second sign is when we breach our conservative volatility box here. And even at this point, we don't really see buyers step in towards that edge hour where we have that VB test, our morning volatility box hour process. Instead of seeing buyers come in here, we see instead sellers have full control and they continue taking price action below the clouds. So this right here is your second sign that, hey, buyers are not really willing to step in more bearish bias off of the first 30 minutes of price activity. And we've even broken outside of our conservative volatility models. So as of right now, we have bearish bias on the daily and bearish bias on the first 30 minutes. Now, if we move forward, let's take a look at what the five minute time frame looked like at the time of the actual setup. Now, the setup came in that 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour. This is the lunchtime East Coast hour when price action rallied into the upper volatility box. Now, one quick thing to point out, usually we are not looking at this as a setup. Once we break outside of the conservative, like we did in that first 30 minutes right here, that's our sign that, hey, Walmart is just off the table. This is again, just to try and point out different observations, maybe different ways we can expand more setups. The idea of using the volatility box to fade in the direction of the trend. The trend here, as we've established, very much bearish. Even when you look at that five minute time frame chart here, you just see a sea of red on that market pulse line. No green, no even breaks of gray here. Very much red through and through. And the first time that we're actually pulling back here, you expect that sellers are going to come in and bring this down at least one more time, at least to a small move, if not all the way back down to retest previous lows. So that was the thought process here, or at least my thinking behind this. We had a bearish trend, we had a pullback to the market pulse, and we had a volatility edge. We really had this entire zone right here to work with in terms of trying to build a short position, really looking for Walmart to not go any greater than 124, given the volatility we're seeing for the short side. Now 124 would also be using this area right here as your previous support resistance zone where you're expecting price to chop and then eventually fade from. So that was the overall idea before the setup actually took place. Now let me show you what the one minute time frame chart looked like. Now on that one minute time frame chart, this is getting even more granular. In that rally, we can see here that rally, the market pulse turns green. This is again off of that one minute time frame chart. We're now hitting the aggressive volatility box. As that's happening, our extended Keltner channel wedges are telling us that we're very much oversold here. So we're starting to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, I think wedges here so a sign here that we're definitely getting oversold we're getting close to previous resistance areas we're also in our volatility edge there's a lot of good things going on for us 
but we're still waiting for one more thing in terms of our setup rules to be met, and that's at least our edge signal confirmation. The edge signal is our overbought oversold indicator, and in this case, a red arrow would suggest to us that we're officially in oversold conditions, looking for this bearish trend to resume. So that was the overall idea here. And for those that are options traders, this is where I think this gets real interesting. Using options here, that 120 strike with the greatest volume here, 32,000 in volume, was currently trading for 71 to 74 cents at the time of entry. And after that time of entry, if I continue showing you what actually happens, retail continues to keep getting hammered here. XRT starts to appear on our live scanner. Also, Target appears on our live scanner, and that's off of our conservative volatility box models. So here that selling pressure continues. Let me show you what it looks like when Walmart hits its first target. So from the actual entry point we were looking at, we had one, two, and three edge signal arrows. So we finally had that being met. We then had price sell off fairly dramatically with these big red candles. What I've noticed is the options premium also tends to expand a little bit more than even what you would get with just price alone. So you have the benefit of that working for you. And if I show you what actually ends up happening here after we hit our first target in terms of the exit, that 120 put that we were looking at when we had our entry was 71 to 74 cents, currently going for 97 to a dollar. So that's about a 33% gain on those two days to expiration. So the shorter dated uh, expiration options here. And the idea here, especially when playing with the shorter dated options, is to have a tight stop. You can see the stop we had on Walmart using the charts, that 124 stop. It's a fairly tight stop given our entry and we had a good entry with the premium going in our direction. So here again, that 120, a nice premium appreciation. But let's see how the day ends. And this is where I think the nasty part comes in. In terms of what actually happens to price, when I showed you the options premium, that was right around this standpoint right here. After that, we have a little rally in Walmart, one more fade opportunity, a double top, if you will. And then we have a sell off where price gets even lower than the point we were looking at for our original exit, where the premium was trading for about a dollar. If we take a look to see what the premium is trading in the after hours activity after the market's closed, that premium for that 120 put dropped back down to 75 to 79. And there we can see that the options move, even though we have a lower move in the underlying, the theta is starting to kick in. The option is less expensive than it was even at this juncture right here. That's what I find very interesting here, especially with some of these videos. That's my goal with these videos is to track some of these anomalies, try and have some data points that we can come back to in reference to get an idea of how, say in this case, options move for a particular ticker, what it looks like to fade a trend in the direction of the overall trend, and how to start with the larger time frame chart and narrow your way in closer. Now for all stock volatility box members, all of the download links are available here. You can either use the pre-generated hourly volatility models that I've created for you, and that's available inside of your My Account page in the My Download section, or you can generate your own files for however many stocks you'd like. We support these models for 10,000 plus off of the indicator page. In case you're not already a member and you'd like to learn more, I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to learn a little bit more and see if you'd like to join. All right, I hope you found this video to be useful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading and stay tuned for more similar updates for all of our stock volatility box members.